today I'm going to show you how to make a V trigger into an S trigger. What I mean by that is that is the gate that uh, comes from one keyboard or sequencer to another keyboard and tells it when a key has been pressed down or released. Now there's sort of two different versions of how that works. Some of the older equipment such as Moog's, uh, Yamaha's, uh, Korg's, I think the Korg MS20 has S trigger which is a shorting trigger. Uh, compared with a lot of the modern day uh, equipment and keyboards which has a voltage that it sends out when you press the key down. Uh, same as the Eurorack modules that sends out a 5 volt pulse when it wants to key on and key off another piece of equipment. Now what you can buy is one of these little Kenton Pro Solos and what happens here is you can send MIDI in and this will split it all up and send it out as a CV in Hertz or volts per octave and also you can choose the sort of gate as well so you can have S trigger or even V trigger. However I've already got keyboards that's got CV and gate so I don't really want this sat in the middle converting everything. So I've got to make a patch cable with a little circuit in the end and what that little circuit's going to do is turn the 5 volts that comes in here from a modern piece of equipment and short the pins at this end which is the S trigger side and all it is is one uh, 2N3904 NPN signal transistor which is really easy to find and a 10k resistor and that's it you just build it in the end there and it should do the conversion so I won't babble on I shall show you basically how V trig and S trig works and then I'll make up a little plug so the difference between S trig and V trig is when the key is off on your keyboard, uh, V trigger, there's nothing coming out of it, zero. The S trigger, there's probably about three volts maybe, and that comes out all the time when the key is released. Now, when you press the key down, what happens is on the S trigger, the voltage drops to zero because it sort of shorts it. Whereas on the V trigger, it goes up to 5 volts and it holds that 5 volts as long as you press that key down. Then again you let go of the key and the opposite happens. So what I've got to build really is this section into this section. So I've put together a little scribble to try and show what I'm going to build. So this is the circuitry, simple transistor, NPN transistor, uh, 10k resistor and this here is going to be the mono jack and this side is going to be the cinch jones connector which is one of these things now you can also put a quarter inch jack on there and plug it into other old yamahas and things whichever uses the s trigger now the 2n3904 i've put a little picture here so you can sort of see what the connectors are on it and this is the cinch jones which is going to be like so and i'm going to try and build the circuitry inside this end here if it'll all fit in there with the little resistor and the 2n3904 and then off to the mini jack and fortunately i've got loads of mini jacks from the pound shop i know this stereo but it doesn't matter uh here is the resistor which is 10k so the band is brown black orange the brown is a one the black is a zero and orange is three more zeros so that's 10,000 making 10k it doesn't matter if it's silver or gold on the end that's just the tolerance band so uh i'm gonna try and make this up and test it on an old synthesizer from a modern synthesizer and see what happens it's actually cheaper for me to just buy one of these ready-made and chop one of the plugs off. Uh, by the time you've got a mini jack and cable and things, you might as well just buy it ready-made. So because this is a, a stereo plug, it has three wires in and I need to know which is the tip and the ring and the sleeve and connect the ring and the sleeve together so it's turned into a, a mono plug basically so i'm just going to snip these and put them on the multimeter and find out what colors go to what yeah green 
So I need to connect the white and the red together. So that will make this into a mono socket. Basically connecting those two together. So it'll just be mono. I right, take the plug apart. This is the Cinch Jones connector. Now on these, the wider plug is plug number one and the smaller plug is plug number two. Don't know why, haven't got a clue, but uh, let's just slap it together. Whatever I do, I'm bound to do it the wrong way round because that's the sort of person I am. Right, I'm going to prepare one of these and try and shape it so that it will go down there in between those two plugs. But let me clear off this old solder first. So as in that picture that I drew earlier, if I bend one of those legs out like so, this is the flat side, okay, and bend this one out this way, and then this centre pin is the one that's got to have the resistor on it. So there's not a lot of room in there here, so I'll just see if that will wedge in there. If not, I'll have to solder them around the outside. I could put that a little bit further down. If I do it like that, that's going to go inside the case. Good. And we'll just solder that into place. So a 10K resistor, and I want to kind of make that so it bends upwards because I need the the tip of this plug connected to there on the resistor. Now snip a bit of this off because I won't be able to get the casing on. So on here now with that flat end there I want to put the uh, sleeve, the ring on the sleeve in this case because it's stereo, onto this pin and then I want to put the tip onto that resistor. I've actually painted one of these red because I want to keep this different from these connectors. So I know that the red ones are the ones with the circuitry inside them. So that'll just make it easier. So solder the green one onto the end of the resistor and then the white and the red goes on to this pin which is pin number one according to this plug there you go that's it now these plugs sell online for about 20 pounds uh, 20 to 30 pounds uh, and I'm guessing if you can get hold of these cinch Jones connectors which are the hardest things to find I'm guessing that is probably going to cost you a few pence for those components there. Well, I think that's in. Now, a couple of these strain reliefs on the side. As long as this is tight and it grips this, then we should have no problem. Nice and tight. There you go. So what should happen now is when I put five volts in there, this end should short circuit. So on the meter here, there you go, it buzzes when it short circuits. And here's a socket. Actually, I don't need that. I can just connect directly to it. So if I connect there and there. Now this is connected to my power supply and I've actually got five volts. So if I touch that on here, this should beep hopefully yes excellent five volts in short circuit uh, I'll go and plug it into the synthesizer now and see how it works so there you go the uh, cables all made up now and uh, this ends plugged into the gate output so when you press a key five volts will come up here into the circuitry and that will change it to an S trick which is shorting trigger I guess anyway this end I'm going to plug it into a, a two into one cinch Jones cable here because I'm going to 
set off two envelope generators. One of them's going into the voltage controlled low pass filter and the other one's going to go into the VCA. I hope. Let's see what happens. Right, so that's plugged in. And now, when I play a note, this should sound. <laughs> Nice. So uh, if I use like an arpeggiator, then it should arpeggiate all the notes for you through as well. So let's see what happens. And uh, I guess also if I set off the uh, sequencer on this, that will, will control it as well. So there you go. Easy to make if you need one of these. Uh, Basically, the S trig was only really used on some of the old synthesizers, and sometimes it was actually a quarter inch uh, jack for some other keyboards. But uh, there you go, nice and easy to make. Turn a gate into an S trig. All the best. Thanks so much for watching. Bye bye.